William Osler was one of the last generations of great physicians on the Western biomedical side. And one of the things I loved the most about him was that he was very meticulous about sharing what really denotes a cure and what really denotes medicine, as opposed to keeping someone on a drug or a treatment for an indefinite period of time. Now in this video, I wanna share one of his best quotes that I think is the most important lesson in self-healing and in self-knowledge and self-wisdom and how you can use this knowledge to heal yourself of whatever you're trying to work on. Hey, I'm Alex Hine, author of the book, Master the Day. Now I've included a bonus download here for readers, which is five Chinese medicine daily habits you can use to potentially add 10 years to your life. It's the first link in the description there below. So if you click that, download that, you'll be able to access that right away. And you'll also get a weekly email from my newsletter on how to use Chinese medicine habits to live a better life. So the habit and the quote from William Osler goes a little bit like this. The good physician treats the disease. The great physician treats the patient who has the disease. Now I think there are a few reasons why you can use this to completely change your life. For example, there are often patients who fall into like the hypochondria category. There are people who are driven by anxiety. They come in, the story they tell you is very, very, very long. We're kind of in our feelings a lot. There's a lot of uh, self-victimization. There's a lot of blame. There's a lot of like, this happened in my childhood and that happened. My parents sucked. My job sucked. The people I dated all sucked. And there's just like a little bit of this tone of dripping of victimization. Like life's been happening to me and I'm really tired of it. I didn't sign up for it. I didn't want this. And so when you look at this kind of person and I'm saying this is a very vague sense, what does, what's the medicine that person needs? Do they need the pill, the treatment, the surgery, the acupuncture, the herbal formula, the massage, or is what they need something deeper than that? This kind of patient is usually has heavy amount of anxiety. There's a heavy amount of fear as well. So this kind of person is someone like you kind of just want to like hug. You want to like put a warm blanket around them, like pat their back. It's going to be okay, little Jimmy. And this person is not necessarily someone you'd want to heavily medicate. You know, often when you go to the physician, when the person is screaming hypochondria, when they have all these anxieties and fears and they're very skittish and worried, and what about that, what about that, what about that? The doctor is kind of annoyed and that's the kind of person they're going to put on medication. You know, they're the kind of person you're just going to like put on Prozac last generation. So it's this weird sense of what's the true medicine the person needs. For that kind of person who's very worried and all this stuff has gone on in their life, maybe they just need to feel safe and secure. Here's another case example. You have the type A businessman, Wall Street banker, New York City, is like this, 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 by the books, time doesn't take time for lunch it's just like discipline to a t but literally discipline to a fault by definition because he's coming in for medical treatment because his discipline has made him ill he's been sleeping for five hours drinks five cups of coffee a day doesn't go to the gym high powered high stress job and hasn't been taking care of himself now he's 30 pounds heavier he has insomnia he has erectile dysfunction He's gaining like some fat that he never really had before, prior in his 30s. And there's all these things that are going on. But because he's so disciplined and so kind of neurotic about his control of everything, does he need medication? Does he even need massage or acupuncture or formulas? Or does he need to surrender? Does that patient need interventions? Or does he need the ability to take his foot off the gas pedal and just chill a little bit, and just let go a little more. Just, maybe I can work less hours, maybe I can not power walk to work, maybe I don't have to be pushy with people, maybe I can just let things go. And sometimes, just by that change in life approach, I'm just gonna let things go just a little bit. Take my foot off the gas a little, take time for lunch breaks, my digestion and my acid reflux is gonna go away. I'm not gonna work so late, or put so much on my plate because I'm trying to be the highest performer and then the insomnia will improve. Or maybe it's just like, I'm going to just not try to grit and bear it and then I won't be so easily agitated when I go home with my wife or my friends. So what medicine does that person need? The type A high-powered drivers, it's all forward, momentum. What they need is that surrender ability. 
all right, I'm just going to ease off the gas a little bit. And then maybe as a third case example, you have the person who's just so afraid of the world, so afraid to ever date again, so afraid to even apply for the dream job, so afraid to even book that flight to Europe, so afraid to say no to her mom, so afraid to say no to his dad, just afraid of the world. This kind of agoraphobia is just afraid of living. They won't take any risks for anything. They the same meals, the same schedules, no variation, but it's driven by fear. It's not driven by love. So you can give this patient all the treatment in the world you want, and maybe they'll improve a little bit, but it's the character, the personality traits that are driving this kind of neurotic, fear-based behavior of, I don't want to make a mistake, this kind of weird perfectionism. And so for that person, maybe what they need is a little bit more self-love. It's okay if I make a mistake. Nothing's going to happen some practices or some hobbies that will gently get them out of their comfort zone to let them know the world is not a dangerous place. The world is mostly a fine place. And just all these practices to like take the sheltered dog and just, you know, just pat it on the back. It's going to be all right. You're going to be all right, Billy. Come on, boy. Just give them a little bit of that nurturing. You just like, get out, you know, get out of the house. Get out of your comfort zone. You'll be good. So in all these case studies, you have a person... You have illness patterns, you have disease, pathology, and you have the human in front of you. And ideally, all holistic or integrative medicine, all real medicine really, treats the person and not just the disease. So what is the person that you may be that may be creating these disease patterns? I had to look my own self in the mirror. And for me, it was mostly that type A businessman control freak. By the book, doing too much, high performing, and just stress, short circuiting everything. And just had to let go a little bit. So maybe in this video for you, there's a little gem that'll help you realize how your personality, your character traits, are driving some of your pathology and your illness. And that you can reverse engineer those to figure out how to heal yourself. So again, if you want to learn some of the life-changing habits from Chinese medicine that can help you heal, the first link in the description is a free download for 5 Daily Habits that can help you add 10 years to your life. And if you sign up there, you're going to get a weekly email on how to use Chinese medicine to have a next level feeling of wellness and self-healing. Otherwise, check out that first link in the description and then check out my related videos right there and there.